bodies or animals are important in platforms. They can walk around, fly, jump, or do many other things. We're going to learn how to make a simple body from scratch using an existing base in OpenSource. For this project, we're going to need a text editor like Notepad, Bing, VS Code, and an image editor like the open source GIMP, Photoshop, Microsoft Paint, and so on. A body is composed by a concept, that's basically what it is and what does it do, an image file that contains the artwork, a sprite file, that's a text file describing the animations, and the script, that's the code. We're gonna build a snail that walks around. If you're a beginner, it's easier to use an existing body as a base. We're gonna use the green marmots that appears in waterworks zone. See how it just walks around? The image file contains the artwork. Here's the green marmot. It's got all the animation frames in the same file. A good place to find graphics is open game art. There are many different types of assets you can download. Of course, you can make your own art, but one asset that is particularly interesting is this 8-color full game sprite and tiles. Let's check it out. And it's got a snail, of course. This sprite is very small, so I'm going to use GIMP to resize it. All frames of the animation must be of the same size, and we're using magenta as the transparent color. All right, let's save this to the images folder. Also, the body should be looking right, not left. Otherwise, it will be backwards during gameplay. All right, now let's write the sprite file. As you can see on the left side of the screen, there are many folders that are accessed by OpenSource. For example, if we open the images folder, we're gonna find our new snail. If we go to sprites and then enemies, we're gonna find the sprite files of all the baddies in the game. Let's just copy the sprite of the green marmot. We simply need to update the fields. First, we rename the sprite from green marmot to snail, and then we update the source file. Be careful not to change the original marmot. Next, we should inform OpenSurge how to extract the animation from the image file. Notice how the sprite begins at the top left corner, that is XY00, and ends at XY6424. The source rect field specifies the top left position of this rectangle, as well as its size. Also, the animation has two frames, and each is 32 pixels wide. Let's write that. Next comes the hotspot. That's a point in the animation frame that anchors the sprite. Let's put it at the bottom middle. All right, now we finished the sprite, saying that our animation repeats and that it should play at a rate of 8 frames per second. A sprite may have multiple animations. In this case, we only have one that is called animation 0, the walking animation. Since we only have two frames, frame 0 and frame 1, we write 0 and 1 in the data field. Now we'll cover the script. We'll just copy the script of the green marmot and then change it slightly. Let's just copy the marmot.ss file inside scripts enemies. Since we're using existing code, keep the original author of the script, but add your own name as well, since you're modifying it. By the way, if you want to dive into scripting, you can build absolutely anything you want. We're just doing copy and paste here, but in any case, I'm gonna explain briefly what those things are, so you can get the idea. In search script, objects have a name and can have tags. 
You can add all the tags you want to your objects, but some tags have special meaning. If you add the entity tag to your object, you're saying that it's a game object that should be available in the level editor. If your game object or entity is a baddie, then add the enemy tag as well. In this area, we define the components of the object. There are many components you can use, and a different combination of those components creates widely different things. The actor component is used to render the sprite to the screen. You should specify which sprite you would like to render. The enemy component makes your object behave like a regular betty. You can jump to beat it. If you touch it while being vulnerable, you get hit. The platformer component makes your object be affected by gravity. It's got some neat features that can make your object walk, jump, and so on, but we won't cover them here. Finally, in this area, you can write any code. We're just setting the speed parameter of the platformer here. Let's set it to 30 pixels per second. OK, we're done. Let's test it. I'm going to launch the engine. If you press right three times at the splash screen, you'll be able to open any level you want. OK, now you can see that the snail appears in the level editor. Let's try it out. Yeah, that's it. Now you can go on and make your own baddies. I hope you have enjoyed this.